In this video, we're going to be taking a look at finding the volume of solids that have cross sections that are not circles. So in the disk method and washer method, both of those methods involved circles or circles with another circle cut out. And so in this time, what we're going to have is we're going to have some region in our uh, in our x y plane, and then we're going to have cross sections of that region that are going to be known cross sections, known shapes, but they will not be circles. Uh, so let's kind of take a look at this first example. This one is kind of here to help us kind of help us visualize this idea. So we have a pyramid that is three meters high, uh, that is has congruent triangular sides and has a square base. So it's a square pyramid um, and the base of this is three meters on each side. Each cross section of the pyramid parallel to the base. So if I were to take, uh, so here's my base here. If I were to take a cross section that is parallel to my base here, like this, right? Or any of these cross sections here, like this, um, they are all squares. So we have square cross sections. It wants us to find the volume of this pyramid. Now we could use geometry to find the volume, but we wanna use calculus here. So when we're trying to find this volume, we still know that the integral is going to be, um, for the volume is gonna be the integral of some area function. And dependent on whether we're basically stacking horizontally, right, stacking along the x-axis or stacking along the y-axis is going to determine what a, what variable we're integrating with respect to. So in this case, we're stacking horizontally. So we're basically stacking up square cross sections um, along the x-axis. So that means we're gonna be looking at a function of x. So we're integrating with respect to x here. So we need to find an equation for this area function. So we need to find the area of our cross section. So that hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is the area is not going to be uh, usually, typically it's not going to be defined by a circle. So we know that we have uh, square cross sections. So anywhere that I were to cut this, right? Anywhere that I were to cut this, I'm going to have these square cross sections in this pyramid here. Um, so if you are trying to imagine this pyramid, basically the vertex is sitting at the origin and then the x-axis is kind of running through the middle of this uh, pyramid and it's sticking through like kind of the center of that square, right? The centroid there of that square. Um, so this like pyramid is kind of centered on the x-axis there like that. Okay. So if we're integrating with respect to x, uh, we need to figure out the limits of integration. So it's starting there at the origin and it's going out three meters because we're told that it's uh, a height of three meters. So we're going from zero to three. And we need to find the area of this uh, cross section. So let's go ahead and sketch what like a, a top down view of a cross section would look like. So we know the cross section is going to be a square. So it's a square like this. Um, and then it has its, its center here, right? So it's kind of has a center there. Um, and we know that all the side lengths are, well, they're not three, they're X, right? The lengths are X. So if the, and we know that the lengths are X here because they give us this point here where it says, if we pick some X coordinate that is X units away from the origin, then the length of those sides there is equal to x. So we know that those side lengths are going to be whatever the x coordinate is. So the area for this cross section then is just going to be, so a of x is going to just be x squared. So we can go ahead and find the integral. So it's gonna be the integral from zero to three of x squared with respect to x. Take the, the antiderivative of this, that's going to give me x cubed divided by three, evaluated from zero to three. So I know that when I plug in zero, it's gonna give me zero there. Plugging in three, so three cubed is 27. Uh, so 27 over three is going to be nine. So it's nine minus zero. And so that gives me nine. And they give us units here, so it's meters. So we can say nine cubic meters. 
So the volume of this is going to be 9 cubic meters. Um, so this example is where it gets a little bit more abstract, a little bit more challenging. So let's go ahead and walk through this one. So it says the figure below is a solid with a circular base of radius 1. So they give us the equation of the base. And it says parallel cross sections. So if you look at cross sections that are parallel to each other, um, that are perpendicular to the base, so perpendicular to the circular base, are equilateral triangles. So we have cross sections that are equilateral triangles. And then we want to find the volume of this solid. Okay. So you can kind of see uh, this figure here. It's a little bit hard to tell, but here's the x axis, here's the y axis. So like this outer edge here is a circle, right? And you can kind of imagine the circle continuing back here like this, right? Um, and if we were to cut vertical cross sections, right, kind of cutting down here, it's going to give us uh, these like equilateral triangles. So there's like a bunch of equilateral triangles, parallel equil equilateral triangles being kind of stacked together. And in this figure, it looks like they are uh, cutting them along the x-axis. So we have kind of parallel equilateral triangles like this here. Um, okay, so what is this going to look like? So the first thing that I recommend doing is kind of drawing like a top-down view of what your base looks like. So let me draw the coordinate plane here. So there's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. And we're going to have, uh, it says it's a circular base. So we're going to have a circle here. So looks like this. And our cross section, so if we were to kind of cut, right, cut here along the x-axis like this, um, if we were cutting like this, what would it look like? Well, it's just going to look like a bunch of lines from the top view. But we know that all of those lines are just the e an equilateral triangle. So if I were to take a look at like this cross section here, what does that cross section actually look like? So we basically have um, the base sitting in the two-dimensional xy plane, and then the rest of the figure is coming out of the like off of the screen here in a three-dimensional manner, kind of like in the z-axis and it's sticking up, making up this figure here. So this is basically like the top view of my cross section. And you can imagine that it's like coming out of the screen right uh, towards me if I'm looking top down. And so what do I see here? Well, if I look at my base, they tell us it's an equilateral triangle here. Hmm. Let me draw a better equilateral triangle. I don't know. It's close enough, whatever. Now, um, this piece here represents the base, right? It says the base is going to be perpendicular to, uh, so the, sorry, the cross section uh, base is perpendicular to the base that we have this circle here. Um, so what part of my triangle is this here? Well, this is just this piece here, right? That's just that piece there. And then um, this top part is kind of sticking out like this up from that little base there. Okay, so what is the length? We need to figure out the length because we need to figure out the area of this triangle. Uh, so the length of this is... Well, if we just figure out this point here, this point has coordinates x comma y, right, on the circle there. And so the length from here, from the x-axis to this, is just uh, this y value here. Right? It's just the value of y. And that's going to be the same for this in this negative direction. It still has the same length of y. Yes, we're moving in a negative direction, but overall the distance from the x-axis to this place on the curve has a length of y. So that means that this base, this base of this triangle is has a length of 2y. Let me move this over here a little bit. 
Um, okay, so I want to try and find the area. Now, because I'm stacking this along the x-axis, I'm really going to need to find uh, my area function in terms of x. But before I can do that, let's go ahead and just look at um, some information that we know here. All right. So this is an equilateral triangle. So if I were to drop the altitude here straight down like this, uh, if it's an altitude, it we know that this is perpendicular and it's a equilateral triangle. So we know that this measure is 60, uh, this measure is 60 and- Sorry, I couldn't hear- These will be bisected. So those lengths are Y there. Um, this then would be 30 degrees, right? The bisected angle would be 30. And so the measure of the altitude, if you remember your special right triangles, if this length here is y, then this longer leg is gonna be y times the square root of three. So we know the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So it's gonna be one half, the length of the base in this case is two y, and the height is y times the square root of three here. Okay, uh, if we try and simplify this, what do we get? Well, half times two is one, and so we have y squared times the square root of three. So it's y squared times the square root of three. But remember, we need this to be a function of x. So we need this to be in terms of x. Now they did give us the equation for our square, right? Or sorry, for our circle here, right? This is the equation of that base. So we could isolate this for y and then plug it back in to try and find that um, area. But really we actually have a kind of cool little opportunity here, right? Because this is a y squared. We could actually just try and figure out what y squared is and substitute in for that whole value there. So if I try to figure out what y squared is, I can just subtract, I can isolate y squared by subtracting x squared. And we know that y squared is equal to one minus x squared. So I can substitute that in for y squared. So now I have that a of x is going to be one minus x squared, and then all of that times the square root of three. So this right here represents the area of my typical cross section, right? It's just gonna be one minus whatever my x value is. So if I am uh, out here this far away, it's just gonna be the v x value there squared, and then times the square root of three. And so we're gonna be integrating this. So we're integrating a of x dx. And now we have to figure out our limits of integration. Uh, we can do a couple kind of cool things here. Well, because this is the equation of a circle with radius one, we know that this length here is one, this is negative one. We could integrate from negative one to one, kind of do the whole thing here. But another thing that we could do is we could just integrate here from zero to one and because of symmetry, we could then just double that value. And I think that's probably the easiest way to do this because it allows us to kind of plug in a zero, which is always nice if we have that opportunity and then we can just double that, right? So if I was going from negative one to one, in this situation, that's gonna be equal to twice the integral from zero to one of a of x dx. And that's due to the symmetry that this base has here. So let's go ahead and um, plug in our function. So I'm gonna use this version here. So it's gonna be two times the integral from zero to one of, uh, actually rad three is a constant. So I'm actually gonna pull out this constant here as well. So it's gonna be like two rad three times uh, the integral from zero to one of one minus x squared integrated with respect to x. Okay, antiderivative of this. Um, so we're gonna have this two rad three multiplying all of this. Antiderivative of one is just going to be x. Antiderivative of x squared is going to be x cubed over three uh, going from zero to one. Uh, plug in your upper limit. So that's gonna be one minus a third. So it's two rad three times one minus one third uh, and then plugging in your lower limit is just zero. So it's gonna be minus zero. Simplifying all this, so one minus a third, that's two thirds. Two thirds times two rad three is going to be 
four rad three over three. And so that is going to be the volume of this region here.